glory, God. Amen. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice.
is a great God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I was watching a video the other night, and on that video they showed that you're starting at this point right here. And they showed how far out into the universe, how far out into the future, that how great that is. All the way out, as far as they know, Brother Jim, they couldn't go any further than a certain point. Then they brought it all the way back down to where that person was laying right there. And then they went in through their eye. And they started to show how great and how far they could go backwards. But you know, they got to a point to where they couldn't go back any further either. You know what? That just tells me that my God is greater still than anything we could ever imagine. That's why he said, I have not seen and ear not heard the glories that God has created for us. And that's why I thank him. <laughs> that's why I give him glory. It's not because of us or anything any of us can do, but it's because of what he did and what he's continuing to do. We can't even imagine. Thank you. We think we can praise him, but we can only praise him this much because that's the only understanding we have of him. If we got a bigger picture, it would just blow our minds here on this earth. <laughs> Father God, we just ask you, Lord, right now, Jesus, God, Lord, open up our spiritual eyes, God. Let us see you, God, Lord. Let us understand just a little bit more of you, God. Father God, we're in your glory right now, but God, there's so much more, so many more levels, God, you want to take us to, God. Let us be ready and willing to go, God, Lord, and you take us there, Father. You have our permission, God, Lord, to teach us, to show us, to work on us, in us, and through us tonight, God, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're a real God, Father. You're not a plastic figure on a shelf because we can feel you and you're touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Just have your way tonight, Holy Ghost. Y'all sing it with me. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, then He healed me to the uttermost. And when I think about my Lord, my Lord, how You picked me up and You turned me around, then You placed my feet. Everybody say that again. Then you placed our feet. God, we're glad you placed our feet on the solid ground. Sing that with me again. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he saved, how he raised me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy and he healed me to the uttermost and when I think about the Lord how you picked me up and you turned me around then you placed my feet on solid ground see it makes me want to shout sing it to him hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Yet it makes me want to shout hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, because Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Y'all listen to this. When I think about my Lord, how that he went away to prepare a place, but he said he's coming back. He said he's going to take us home one day. Yeah, when I kind of think about my God, where I was when he reached out and he picked me up and he turned me around just to play my feet on solid ground see it makes me want to shout hallelujah I thank you Jesus cause Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise 
come and take it up to him. It makes me want to shout. I'll shout hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. Cause, Lord, you are. Make it personal. How you went away and you're preparing a place, but you're not gonna stay. You said you're coming back one day and you're gonna take us home. Yet when I think about you, Lord, where I was when you reached down and you picked me up, you didn't leave me there, but you set my feet on a new ground. See, that makes me want to shout, hallelujah, I thank you, Jesus, cause, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all the honor and all the praise. You take up to a time, makes me want to shout, I'll shout, hallelujah, cause I thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're you. 
it in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. They make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. You don't change God. That is who you, you are. are. Jesus. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. the very essence of my being yes, sure. you're my way maker when there isn't any other way that's who you are that's who you are that's who you are Jesus Ha! 
every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, to break every chain. Chain, break every chain, break every chain. I hear the chains falling. Lord, I hear the chains falling. We're gonna leave them there, God. I hear the chains falling. Come on, studio audience, just lift your voice. I feel the chain breaker in this studio right now. We're about to go live here in about a minute. Amen. Just two minutes. Just begin to lift your voice. Let's begin to pray. There's an atmosphere of deliverance here tonight. We're going to believe that people are going to get set free when they tune in, when they log on. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, just begin to pray. Hallelujah. Come on. As we get ready to go in, we're going to sing this again. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name yes, there is. Jesus. Yes, there is. There is power. I feel power here tonight. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There is power. Come on, we got a minute before we go live. Come on. Come on, lift up the prayer atmosphere in here. Yes. Break every chain. Break every chain. Lord, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, Lord, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, Lord, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, you're the chain breaker tonight. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Lives are going to get changed in this atmosphere. Glory, glory to God. Amen. We welcome you to Revive America. The presence of God is in this place so strong. A tangible anointing. The chain breaker is here tonight. He's here to set the captive free, to deliver those that are bound. Hallelujah. And you have not tuned in by mistake, but it's a divine appointment of the Lord. Amen. God knows right where you're at. And the same God that brought Moses and the children of Israel out of bondage is right here to minister and deliver you tonight. There's nothing too great for God. He's a mighty God. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. Amen. We got a full studio. There's an atmosphere of revival in here. We've been singing about the chain breaker. And we're just going to continue. And I'm just going to believe right now as you lift your hands and just cry out to God that God's going to set you free tonight. Come on, let's sing this again tonight. 
Amen. Break every chain. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus tonight. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, Lord, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The only name you need is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He breaks. Every chain breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain, he breaks every chain, breaks every chain. One more time, he breaks every chain, he breaks every chain, breaks every chain, he breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain. Jesus part again, sister. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The only name you need is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain. Every chain breaks every chain, it breaks every chain. Jesus, 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 breaks every chain. Jesus, 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 he breaks every chain. Every mention of his name breaks every chain, breaks every chain. Jesus, 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 breaks every chain, breaks every chain. Last, last uh, live broadcast, we talked about the power of the voice. Voice activate. Now I want you in the studio right now, just lift your voice and shout. Some, come on, just shout in the studio. Come on. Something's happening in the atmosphere. Something's changing. Come on. There's power in your shout. Go ahead and shout tonight. Hallelujah. You're my deliverer. <laughs> Woo. Yes, you are. I feel that. I feel that. I feel deliverance right now. I don't know who it's for, but somebody's watching, whether by television or by Facebook, that God is ministering over you right now the power of the blood of Jesus. The Word of God tells us the name of Jesus is above all names. <laughs> He's a name above all names. He's a King of kings and the Lord of lords. And my Bible says that every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And a lot of us, we read that scripture, I heard it all my life, and we think about it, it's, we think in that context that it's going to be when all's said and done. But I believe right now, cancer's bowing to the name of Jesus. Addiction is bowing, come on. Amen. Alcohol is bowing. Depression is bowing. Right now, those things that have tried to overcome your life is in, in, in this atmosphere where the name of Jesus is being declared. They can no longer stand up in your life. They can no longer stand up. 
And those things that have been tormenting you and afflicting you no longer can stand up because the glory of God that's in this studio is invading your life right now. And I declare over you freedom right now. I declare over your life deliverance right now. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I dare you right where you're at, lift your hands and begin to praise Him. The Bible said He will turn your mourning into dancing and your sorrow into joy. Somebody's getting set free. Generational things. Amen. Addictions and bondage. Amen. Seducing spirits. In the name of Jesus, you must let go. Deliverance. Come on, let's sing that again. Let's sing that Jesus. I feel that, Sister April. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. a mama that's watching and the enemy has really tried to attack your home, your children your grandchildren but if you just begin to worship him right there in your home begin to praise him mama begin to just shout the name of Jesus you might be like me and I can't sing like Jeff and April but I sure can say the name of Jesus and when you declare that name of Jesus the atmosphere has to change Amen. Uh, There's some pastor, you've just been through a warfare in your ministry, attacked in your church. And you might be standing in your, sitting in your office of your facility right now, watching this program. Just begin to walk that sanctuary. Get out of your office and just begin to walk your building and just start shouting Jesus. Grab your phone, take us with you. Amen. I just feel praise needs to rise up. I don't care where you're at, in your car, in a truck, in a a semi-driver, in a motel room in your home. I feel like we need to have a praise right here. All right, man, let's sing that again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus. feel God moving right now in this moment. One thing I learned in ministry is you you don't miss the moment. You seize the moment when God's moving. And I feel deliverance. I feel healing. I feel restoration. And I would encourage you, if you're on Facebook right now, just begin to talk. Uh, Before I came up here, I got in on there and just welcomed a few people. But I feel God, I feel feel a moment right now. Bartimaeus, he knew that Jesus was only going to pass by his life in this moment. And the Bible said he cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. This may be your moment right now. Get on Facebook and we got a couple people that will respond to you quickly. Call the studio, call the uh, TV station. Don't miss this moment. I feel miracles right now. I feel healing right now. Hey Amen. We're going to do it one more time. There's something about singing the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's do it one more time. Call in. Text somebody. Hey Amen. Get a hold of somebody on Facebook right now. Get your miracle. Get your deliverance. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Every chain breaks every chain, it breaks every chain, it breaks every chain, 
breaks every chain, breaks every chain. Come on, let's give God about 10 seconds of a praise tonight. Come on. Put your hands together. Lift your voice. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I sense in my spirit today this was not going to be an ordinary broadcast. Everyone is different and unique. But I sense that tonight was going to be a special night. And uh, I feel God doing something. How many feel God doing something in this studio? Hallelujah. He's awesome. It's hard to explain. You know, I grew up all my life. Christian TV was around when I was a kid. And I remember watching those preachers when they would look into the camera and begin to speak things in the camera. And I'd be like, how can they feel that? And it's hard to explain. But when you're under the anointing, you can feel just like you do in an audience. And I just, I, I could literally hear chains breaking in lives tonight. Not just in this room, but through television and through Facebook. God's moving. The anointing is here. The spirit of revival is here. We just came out of nine cities of tent revivals. We're in a revival spirit, if y'all could see. And we came here to WTGR to have church tonight. And I believe some folk arrived here to join us, not just in the studio, but on television and on Facebook. And let's just give God one more thank you, one more praise tonight. Can you do that? Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. I don't know where we're going to go, but I'm going to just start trying to preach tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn to Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah, appreciate the great group of people that's come to support us. Our friends at Augusta Assembly of God, we love you guys. Thank you for coming. The Skinners, Pastor Donnie and his wife, thank you. And good to see the Austins and different ones that are here. Good to see Pastor Haley back there. God bless you. And uh, those of you that are watching my Facebook, amen, several of you I recognized some good friends of the ministry. We appreciate you tuning in. I'm excited about what God's doing, aren't you? This is a great time to be serving the Lord. How many appreciate Jeff and April? So good to have them with us. Amen. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says this. Then he said to them, this is Nehemiah talking to his generation. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send the portions to those for, for those whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Everybody shout holy. holy. Do not sorrow. One of the translation means do not be depressed. We talked about in the last broadcast, I believe it was, when we talked about voice activating, that the children of Israel were scattered in the valley. The bones in the translation for the valley is a depressed area. For the joy... Everybody shout joy. joy. Go ha, 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 ha. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you rewind just a little bit to the left, uh, uh, Nehemiah says these words. He says, for they make us afraid, saying their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now, therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hands. Everybody shout strength. strength. Those of you that are watching, just say the word strength. Strength. I want to speak tonight on this broadcast, a message entitled, A Nehemiah Mandate and the Revival Runaways. The Nehemiah Mandate and the Revival Runaways. Revival, and I'm passionate about revival. Anybody passionate about revival in this place tonight? I believe revival is here. I believe revival is happening. I believe it is for the church. But revival and restoration goes together. Where you see restoration, you'll see revival. Where you see revival, you're going to see restoration. When a true God sent revival arrives to a nation or a city you will see that it brings restoration 
a God sent revival, not a series of meetings. That's something that we planned out or we brought in a speaker, our favorite preacher. But when there is a God ordained sent revival, it brings restoration. It brings restoration to individuals. I feel restoration right now in this service. I feel lives are being restored. Maybe stories we will never hear about, but something's happening because there's a spirit of revival in this studio. For a moment there, I almost thought, Sister Donette, but we can go on a few nights and just have church here in the studio. Amen. That spirit of revival, it brings restoration, restoration to individuals and to families. We have seen families get restored in revival, marriages, children, come on. It brings restoration to churches and to ministries. When revival comes, it will bring restoration to cities, come on, to nations, come on. Hallelujah. I, I read an article about tent meetings and, and, and revivals of the past. Men like Billy Sunday and, and great tent revivals that happened in the past. It, uh, it actually, in the cities they came to, crime rate went down. Violence went down. Come on. Poverty was broken. See, when real, real revival comes, it will shift a city. It will shift a nation. We as a team, we are, we are really uh, uh, pondering about our future with the tents. And one of the things God's dealing with me about, because we got so many invitations that we're only doing five days with the tent. And I feel like God's saying, me, pl saying to me, plan to stay in cities longer until you start seeing a shift. Come on, y'all with me. Hallelujah. And so restoration comes with revival, but there is a labor that comes with restoration. There's a labor that comes with revival. Oh, y'all with me? Y'all got quiet now. I know, I know y'all don't want to talk about work. Hallelujah. But revival for Nehemiah, revival for Nehemiah and his generation uh, required a labor of the heart. Their heart had to labor for it. Amen. And, and for God to do something in our lives, our heart has to be in it. It has to be a labor of love. Y'all with me? If we really want to see a change in our generation, uh, we got to have a labor. Our heart, our heart has to be in it. It has to be a labor from the heart. For ministry, ministry to succeed, it has to be a labor of the heart. For marriages to be a success... You have to put work into a successful marriage. Come on. Amen. Don't head to divorce court too early just because things ain't working out. Invest labor to make that marriage work. Amen. Churches will become a success when you labor. You will receive what you put into it. Just because you have a call of God doesn't mean it's all going to happen. Come on, you've got to labor it. You've got to make it work. You've got to invest in it. Your career, you can have a college degree and do nothing with it. This is good preaching right here. You've got to labor to be successful in area. It has to be, it's a heart thing. Come on, your heart has to be in it. And I believe there are those in this hour that has a Nehemiah mandate on their lives that has the heart to see revival and restoration come to America. Come on, the theme of this broadcast is Revive America. And I am believing as I preach that there are those watching from around America that has a Nehemiah mandate that they have a heart. They're not just saying, I want revival. They're not just saying, I want to see my generation touched. They're not just saying, I'm going to make this statement and do this because everybody's making statements right now about everything. But when there are those that has the heart, the heart, if my people humble themselves and call upon my name, I will heal their land. I want to tell you something. God wants it. And say, God, I will labor for revival. I will labor for restoration. Somebody give God a praise in here tonight. Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a part of a great revival, Pastor Haley. It was a great revival that if you begin to study it, it involves several major individuals in the Old Testament. 
Nehemiah was just a part of a great move of God. You will find out that there was a man named Ezra. And Ezra was used by God to bring people back to the glory. Brought him out of captivity, led him back to the city of God. Oh, y'all better help me. And not only did he lead the people back, but, but the captives that he was under said, go ahead and take all the furnishings of the temple back with you. Take the silver and the gold. And Nehemiah weighed out. The Bible said he weighed out and he weighed in. Y'all with me tonight? And so he was a part of this move of God. Then there was Zechariah. Because we, we're going to learn about the walls, but at the same time, God was rebuilding a temple. He was restoring his temple. Amen. And he was using individuals, but he needed a prophet. Amen. To keep the builders building. And Zechariah come by and said things like, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Begin to say things to those that got discouraged in the building of the temple. Is this all right? Begin to say things that like, uh, throw away your measuring stick. Yeah. Woo. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. God's going to do something bigger than you can measure out. I'm about to preach. God wants to do something bigger than what you can measure out. Hallelujah. Because when you measure it, you're putting a limit on what... Oh, I'm about to what God wants to do. But he said, you can't even count the width and the depth. Oh, y'all better help me preach. And, and, and then he said things like, it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Amen. Then in the same revival, God raises up a prophet, Haggai. And Haggai began to prophesy to the complacency of a generation. He said, you're building your houses you got all these things, but what about my house? And he began to talk about those who had seen the glory of Solomon's house. Amen. Where the glory filled and the priest could not stand to minister. I feel the glory in here. And he said, do you remember that glory? He said, the latter glory shall be greater. But you got to get your house in order. You got to get your heart right. Then come Nehemiah. Because God was not just rebuilding a temple, rebuilding a nation, restoring a people, but he was restoring the city of Jerusalem. And Nehemiah's job was to build the walls. Are y'all with me? It was a revival. Somebody say it was a revival. It was a revival of a city a revival of a nation, and a revival of a church. I believe we are seeing prophetically in the Scripture through the story of Nehemiah, Ezra, Zechariah, and Haggai what God is wanting to do in America in this season and this time. That God is raising up prophetic voices that has a heart for a move of the glory of God. Woo, I feel this. God wants to send revival in this last day. But there are challenges to it. Prophetically, Jesus prepared us for it. He said in that last days before his return, he said the spirit of fear will control people. Fear is a challenge to revival. The fear of stepping out. The fear of doing what God's called you to do. Somebody's watching and you've had a call of God in your life and you have not stepped in it because fears kept you in that pew. Fears kept you limited. Jesus told us another challenge of the last days would be uh, that there will be a spirit of offense. People will be easily offended. Easily offended by the gospel. Offended by people's actions. Come on, a spirit of offense. If you don't believe me, just get on Facebook. Just watch social media. Come on. Just look at our culture today. And the third thing about the challenges of our time, that there will be a spiritual complacency, just as it was in the days of Nehemiah. Matter of fact, we learn out of Scripture is there's going to be a great falling away. I never thought there would be a day that you'd have to beg people to come to church. I get tired of begging people to come to church. And I'm not talking about sinners. I'm talking about church members. Come on. Begging them. 
Amen. A spiritual complacency. We're okay. Everything's fine. Just give me a donut and a cup of coffee. Entertain me. Come on. Amen. Don't keep me past 12 noon. Just, I just want to feel comfortable. Don't, don't preach anything that will convict me. And, and we're so entertainment driven that we have, we have dancing monkeys in our pulpits now. Entertainment driven preaching. Come on. We flock after our favorite preacher. We flock after our favorite music. Come on. And it's a spiritual complacency. Church numbers are declining in every major denomination in America. The fourth challenge to revival is that there's going to be a spiritual weariness. Daniel said in the last days he will wear out the saints of God. Nehemiah had a mandate, but he also had a warfare that came with it. There was a revival, but he had to deal with the spiritual warfare of intimidation and manipulation. And Nehemiah began to rebuild the walls, and the material that he used for it, was, the Bible said, was burnt stones. Broken stones. Thrown away stones. Stones that had been in the fire. How many say, I've been through the fire? Come on. Woo! Hallelujah! Amen. Stones have been burnt. Stones have been through the fire. Amen. The rubble. See, that's what I love about God. Listen to me right now. God uses rubble to build revival. I don't know where you came from, but I've been, I, I once was a bunch of rubble that everybody thought would never amount to anything. But if God could tightly fit me with some living stones, oh, the word of God says we are living stones tightly fit together. Amen. He's gathering the rubble of this hour, the burnt stones, the burnt individual, and he's building a great revival on the earth. Woo! That may mean, that may mean the one that's going to bring the message may not be who you picked. They might have red ear with, red hair with piercings. Come on. They might have tattoos. Come on. Amen. They may not have what we think they are to be qualified. They may not have a PhD and never been to cemetery. I mean, seminary school. They, they may have come out of drug addiction. They may have come out of perversion, alternative lifestyles, but God is choosing. Amen. And this last day generation of preachers and prophets may not look like what the church has always picked, but God says, I'm going to use the things that men thought I could never use to bring a glory and a revival. Somebody ought to shout. Oh, that your neighbor and say, God's turning your rubble into revival. Woo, hallelujah. How many's got some rubble? Come on. And Nehemiah began to rebuild the walls. The walls represent power and authority. I want to prophesy to you today, tonight, that I believe power and authority is coming back to the church again. It's time we demonstrate the power of God and the authority of God. And he began to rebuild the walls and begin to restore the gates. The gates were entryways. There were passages. There were thresholds. And while they were building, there was a battle. They built with one hand and they warred with the other. Half of the people would build and the other half would war. Half would work and the other half would war. But they started getting weary, weary in revival. They were losing their strength. They were losing strength. They were losing heart in the labor. Jeremiah 51, 46 says this, Don't let your heart grow faint. Be not afraid. Whew. Nehemiah knew his people. He knew they were getting weary. He knew that their heart was fainting, that they were falling away. And he kept yelling to them, stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. I just want to yell at somebody right now, stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. I know you're weary, but don't get off the wall. Don't run away from revival. Don't become a revival runaway story of a man named Hosea. He fell in love with a woman named Gomer. Boy, that's quite a name. I picture Shrek's wife from the Shrek cartoon when I think of Gomer. Gomer was a streetwalker, a prostitute. She didn't know real love. 
she, her whole life was a fake presence, a fake, fake uh, 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 a manifestation of love. The only love she knew was an exchange. She never found true love. She was a prostitute. But Hosea fell in love with Gomer. And he took her out of her rubble. Took her out of her mess. Woo. Not only did that he do that, Sister Spratt, but he gave her his name. Oh, I'm about to preach in here. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that we have a God, a bridegroom? Come on. How many know we are the bride? And he loved us. We didn't know real love. We thought we knew real love. Somebody's watching tonight, and you've been searching your whole life, relationship after relationship, trying to find true love. But I believe love is walking right into your life right now. The love that, that you can't find in this world, the love that money can't give you, that people can't give you. And, 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 and he gave her his name, and, and he restored her life, and everything he had was hers. But she ran away. She ran away from the love of Hosea. Her past seduced her. Her heart fainted. She lost the labor to make this thing work. Now begin to think about that because I've watched people all my life. I've watched God rescue them. And I've watched God use them and start placing them in the right places to do what he wants to do, then they start fading away. Somebody's watching tonight that you used to be active in the kingdom of God, but somewhere in your past you faded away. You've become lukewarm. You used to be passionate about God, but you lost heart. You saw too much. He gave you his name, but you still ran away. Preachers, pastors, that once you believed in revival, once you believed with a passion that revival was coming to your church, but now you're just going through the motions. And you convinced yourself that it was never going to happen. And yes, you're still holding a position. And yes, you're still pastoring. And yes, you're still preaching. But you've become a revival runaway. You got off the wall too soon. Somebody say, stay on the wall. Damaged hearts. It was a heart condition for Gomer. It had to be something in her heart. Something on the inside that would cause her to, to run. And those that were getting off the walls at the time of Nehemiah had to be something in their heart. Something that would cause them to run away from what God was doing. Whew, I feel the Lord talking. So I begin to think about the hearts. Can I talk about the hearts for about a minute? There's the fearful heart, afraid, afraid of hurt, afraid of disappointment, and it limits destiny, and it limits the work of God. The second one is the anxious heart, anxiety, worry, nervous. You don't enjoy life. There are people in ministry, you're not enjoying ministry. You're having heart attacks spiritually. Heart conditions, fear and anxiety. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything. In his presence is perfect peace. You can have peace while you're laboring. You can enjoy ministry again. Come on. The third thing is the rejected heart. Rejection. I don't have enough time. Broadcast ain't long enough to talk about the power of a rejected heart. Fourth one is the offended heart. Once again, we don't have time to talk about the offended heart, but it's a danger to revival. The tormented heart, tormented by life, tormented by your past, tormented by situations, tormented by what somebody did to you. Maybe you was raped when you were younger and that has tormented you maybe you uh, committed an abortion you was a young girl that was scared and didn't know what to do with your life and you took the wrong advice and you gave up that baby and it has tormented you maybe it was things that you saw happen maybe you lost a loved one in an accident and that dreams have tormented you in the middle of the night i don't know what causes you or me to run at times but god knows our heart 
And Hosea, the thing about Hosea was even though Gomer was a revival runaway, that her heart fainted. The Bible said he saw her on the auction block. See, this is what I love about God. He still is married to the backslider. Woo, come on. Hallelujah, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what bondage you find yourself in, Jesus will always come back. And that's the power of the blood of Jesus. It keeps redeeming and redeeming and delivering and delivering. Amen. The blood of Jesus still works today. And Nehemiah looked at his generation. Their heart was fainting. And they, became, they, were, they were being like Gomer. They were ready to run from what God was doing. They were ready to get off the wall. They were ready to run away from revival. I feel this tonight. Amen. And he said, he told him, he said, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart, pastor. Don't lose heart, leader. Don't lose heart, mama. Don't lose heart, businessman. Stay on the wall. Keep fighting the good fight. Stay in the labor because God is doing something in this hour. Somebody praise him if you believe that tonight. Hallelujah. Mm. They were depressed and they were discouraged. And Nehemiah gathered them. And by now Ezra had showed up. And he had over 50,000 people with him. He brought back to Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us that they met at the fountain gate or the water gate. A little different than the water gate we know in American history. But it was the water gate. And they met there, the place where the water is. Woo, where the water is flowing. Where the Spirit of God is. <laughs> Woo, halabokoshanda. The Word of God said there's, it, it, that, that refreshing comes in the presence of of the Lord. Lift your hands and let God refresh you right here in this studio right now. Come on, there's there's a spirit of God flowing in this studio tonight. Glory. And they came to the water gate and Ezra began to speak the word. Begin to read the word. See, that's the power of preaching. That's why the devil doesn't want preaching like this on TV. That's why the enemy doesn't want pastors that will preach the gospel. That's why the enemy doesn't want revivalists like me because there's power in the Word of God. That's why there will be false prophets and teachers in the last days because the enemy will do anything it can to dilute the Word because when the Word starts getting declared, it starts bringing a restoration. It brings refreshing. And when you've got the Word and the Spirit together... There ain't a devil in hell that's going to stop what God is doing. Hallelujah. They were depressed and Nehemiah said to them, he said, this day is holy. In other words, he said, this is just not an ordinary thing because they'd done this out of custom. It was, it was a custom to read the law, to read the word. It was, it was a religious thing that they did. But he said, this is different today. This is a holy thing. God's doing a holy thing. And I I feel like right now, this is not just another TV broadcast, but God's doing a holy thing right now. There is a sovereign thing going on that's bigger than us. God is restoring his people. God is reviving his people. God is restoring the hearts. Isaiah said, for the spirit of God is upon me, for he anointed me to preach the gospel and to me in the broken heart. Woo. Oh, I speak healing to every broken heart. I speak restoration to every weary heart, every weary soul, every damaged heart. Right now, Holy Spirit, do an inner work, an inner work in every life that's watching right now. Somebody say yes. yes. Nehemiah, the same man that said, God, strengthen my hands. Strengthen my hands for the labor that we need to do. Nehemiah said, this is a holy day. And he said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody say joy. (laughs) Some Christians, you can't tell they got salvation or indigestion. 
joy. The joy of the Lord. We was just at a conference in Macon, Missouri, and several people came up and said, we've been watching the program. They're right on the edge of the broadcast. But Sunday morning, joy came into that service. Joy came over those people that were watching. There's something about joy. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. For those that need strength, I believe joy is the key that gives you strength. Ephesians 3.16 says this, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened. Everybody shout strengthen. By the might of his spirit. Or other words, the Holy Ghost. Come on. Amen. In the inner man. The old timers said it this way. Jesus on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. See, when you find inner strength, it creates a stability in the believer. See, I grew up watching people in my daddy's church and in ministry for 24 years. I think one of the greatest downfalls of the spirit-filled, charismatic, Pentecostal group of people is in still, in instability in our walk. In and out, up and down. We know how to let the Spirit of God move, but we, we don't allow God to do an inner work in us. And when stability happens on the inside, it creates longevity. That we will last, come on. That this thing will continue. Joy. Nehemiah said, you need strength back. He said, you need joy. The thing about joy is joy is not a feeling. It's not. Too many of you, you go by your feelings. But joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Just lift your hand and say, I need joy, Lord. I need the fruits of the Spirit. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Some of us, we need a little glory because we've lost our joy. Times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. God wants to restore joy in this hour. Joy in ministry. Joy in our marriages. Joy in our worship. I believe we can have the joy of salvation. You ever watch somebody that just got saved? There's a joy in salvation. Then there's a joy in our faith, in our walk. But there's also joy in the Holy Ghost. I got news for you religious people. There's no sad Holy Ghost. Come on. Joy. Somebody shout joy. Hosea saw the restoration of his bride, but he was also seeing what God was doing in his generation. In Hosea chapter 6, I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Hosea begins to prophesy. He says, come, let us return to the Lord. In other words, get back on the wall. Let us return, for he, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. <laughs> that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. That resurrection power. Come on, somebody shout resurrection. That we may live in his sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. He is going forth. Is established as the morning. In other words, he's saying everything else in your life may be unstable. Your heart may be unstable. But God never changes. Amen. He's like the rising of the sun. You can count that God will be there tomorrow. Amen. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Come on. And he says, goes forth established in the morning, and he will come to us like the rain. Woo. I'm about to forget I'm on TV because I'm about to have church in here. 
like the latter and the former rain on to the earth. Yeah. Joe said, in last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters, handmaidens, young, the old. And he said, it will be the former and latter rain together. Yeah. That, that, that former rain, it's hard. It comes hard. It beats the ground. It breaks up the dry, hard ground so the seed can get planted. But that latter rain brings the harvest. Yeah. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Lord. I want to tell you tonight, in the studio and on television, on Facebook, God wants to restore our cities. God wants to heal our land. God wants to bring revival. But God wants to heal our hearts first. I heard a song a couple of days ago. It got in my spirit. I get hooked on one song. <laughs> and this song I've never heard. I, I, I've tried to look on iTunes and different places. I don't think it's even been recorded yet. Uh, that's one thing about YouTube right now. When God's birthing songs are putting it right on, you know, before it even gets in a, a CD or a studio. But a, wo a woman named Catherine Mullins sings a song that's called Available. And I just want to read part of this to you. It says, if you're looking for a city, for a place to show your glory, look no further, we're available. <laughs> Woo, come on. If you're searching for a people who are hungry for revival, look no further, we're available. Man, I feel this right now. And one of the verses says this, and I love this. If it sounds like the kingdom is all we're talking about, if it sounds like we've tuned out all other noise, we're just listening for you because we want revival. I'm about to have church. And I love this part, this little hook or this tag. It says this, make this the time. Make this the place and make us the people. If you're looking for a city, a place to show your glory, look no further, we're available. If you're searching for a people who wants revival, look no further, we're available. Then it goes on to say this, we volunteer, we volunteer, we volunteer, we volunteer, we volunteer to be carriers of your glory. I feel a Nehemiah mandate right now. And I feel God stirring the hearts of those who have passionately cried out for revival, who have seen the rubble of their generation, who have seen the burnt places of their cities, who have seen the condition of their nation. God's searching their hearts. And they're saying, if you're looking for somebody, we're available. But I also feel the Spirit of God reaching out through these airwaves. And He's grabbing the runaways off of the auction blocks. And he's saying, I still love you. I still got a plan for you. I still have a purpose. I feel the glory of God in this place. Amen. We have about eight minutes left. Sister April, can you just lead us into the glory of God? Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, dwell in this. Here's what I want to do tonight. I want to ask some of you worshipers who are saying, I'm available, God. I want you to come fill this front and just begin to worship as we go off the air. Amen. Just fill this front. Lift your hands. Don't worry about the cameras. Don't worry about the TVs. Don't worry about anything. Hallelujah. Let's just press in this evening. Those of you that home, those of you that are watching, right where you're at, come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Jesus. In all of your glory. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Fill this place with joy overflow. Hallelujah, Lord. And peace overflow. Come on. And love overflow. In all of your glory, fill this place with joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Restoration. And peace overflow. God, do an inner work right now, Holy Spirit. And love overflow. In all of your glory. Come on, as you worship tonight, this is a holy thing. God's doing an inner work right now. The Holy Spirit's working on damaged hearts. The Holy Spirit's working in this studio on broken hearts, fainting hearts. By television, through these cameras, the Spirit of God's doing an inner work right now. Just worship. I know it may feel awkward, but just worship right where you're at with Sister April and Jeff. And let God do a healing and restoration inside of you. And if you... If you don't remember anything I've said this night on this broadcast, remember these words. Stay on the wall. Don't run away. This is the time. This is the place. And you're a part of the people that God wants to use in this hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Feel this place with joy. Nehemiah said, strengthen my hands. Strengthen my hands. To me, the hand represents the fivefold ministry. I have a heart for the fivefold, for pastors, for evangelists, for prophets, for apostles, teachers. And all over America, I see men and women of God in the fivefold that are weary. Even, watch, even watching this program, there are those of you that you've lost the joy of ministry. It's become more of a labor. You're losing heart. Things are frustrating you that you used to overlook. I don't know who this is for. I don't, I don't know the impact of this moment right now, but I feel God speaking to somebody and saying, let me do a work in you. Because I can't lose you. I need you on the wall. I need you. I know you've been in a war. I know you've been in a battle. But trust my spirit. That same anointing you preach and sing and prophesy under, that same anointing that you see flow out of you wants to do a work in you, preacher. God wants to heal right now. Offense is not going to be a part of your ministry. Bitterness will not be a part of who you are. God, I speak restoration, restoration into every man and woman that you have called to ministry right now. God, if you can revive your leaders, you will revive, you will revive a generation. And I thank you, God, that even politicians that may tune into this, 
God, leaders that have voices in our nation, healing into their hearts, restoration. Hallelujah. Pastor, don't give up on your marriage yet. Let God heal it. Young person, don't give up on your dream. Let God restore your heart. It's not too late. Let him do a work in you. Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Come on. We got about two minutes left. Just continue to worship. Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> Holy Spirit, dwell in this house. Thank you, Lord. Fill this place with joy, joy. and overflow. Flowing. And peace over. <laughs> ready to sign off I just feel led to pray over the the leadership of CTN network those who I may never meet those who make this great network work I just speak a refreshing over those who have labored in the studios in the offices on the in the boardrooms to make decisions for this network God send a great refreshing to all of them God let joy fill their lives New strength come. New strength, a wind, a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost for this network. Amen. Come on, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Those of you that are on Facebook, just stay with us. Just stay with us. Hallelujah. Amen. I just feel God wanting to minister joy, peace, and healing in this place. Hallelujah. Glory.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Spratt, I just see the Lord refreshing you tonight. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for that Zachariah anointing. Thank you, Jesus. God, stir up the prophetic gift in him. Stir it up, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey, hey. Stay on the wall, prophet. Stay on the wall. <laughs> I need your voice. I need your obedience. <laughs> speak, speak. Hallelujah. I just see the Lord giving you rest right now. Rest in your life, in your spirit, in your physical body. Your spirit. Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The glory of God's in this place. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. stirring of the prophetic gift right now hallelujah God I thank you for your giftings I thank you God for the prophetic the tongues interpretation the gift of prophecy God wisdom and knowledge God you're stirring those gifts hallelujah God that we can build God that we can encourage each other you know that's what prophecy does encourage us to stay on the wall <laughs> Woo, I feel that happening right now thank you Jesus oh God we need true voices we need Haggai's we need Zacharias we need Ezra's that will just encourage a generation keep laboring for revival keep laboring for revival stay on the wall Come on, those of you that are in the studio, just lift your voice and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. When you don't even know what to pray, the Spirit of God does. 
Hallelujah. God's wanting to birth a new thing. God's wanting to birth a new thing. Oh, come on. Come on. The Bible said they had no strength to labor. They had no strength to birth. But I feel strength rising up in this studio right now. It's God's getting ready to birth new things. Come on. Come on. Oh, lift your voice. Cry out. Cry out. Come on, somebody cry out. Come on. Come on. I feel a birthing right now. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. God birth a new revival. God birth new things, new dreams, new vision. Fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Have your way, God. Sister April, I just see you really travailing and laboring right now. There are hundreds that are watching. If you, you feel you, God give you something, I want to give you the freedom to speak over them, sis. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. I just see her laboring in the spirit. Come on, saints. Maybe others in here. There are those that will be watching by the hundreds at the tail end of this. I feel like God's ministering over people in ministry, over weary pastors, over weary saints, over weary leaders. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Don't get weary. Don't get faint-hearted yet. Come on, I feel something bigger than this in this room right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're good. Thank you, Lord. God keeps giving me dreams of a tidal wave of the glory of the Lord. Come on the people and they're not sitting there judging whether or not it's it's of him they're just immediately responding quaking shaking under the power of God like electricity is hitting them and I want to tell those people say I wish that was happening here I'm telling you do not give up like Bob preached tonight don't give up don't give up 
when you're on the verge of it all happening, the thing that we've prayed for and we've longed for for so long, we're about to see with our own two eyes. And as even while you, before you begin to preach, God just kept flashing that, that dream back to me over and over again. All I could see is hands just shaking like a wave. And as the glory of the Lord went across, it was just immediately obvious where the Spirit of God was touching. And tonight we just walked right into it, right into a wall of His glory tonight. Just raise your hands right there where you are. If you're watching via Facebook, put that thing down for a minute. Close your eyes. Let His glory wash over you. Come on, recall what it was like to be in His presence. Recall it. Think about it. Think about the goodness of the Lord. He's not abandoned you. He's not left you. He's not... There's not an expiration date on the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, just let allow that alabaster box of anxiety and grief break it. Don't hold it any longer. Break it and pour it on his feet. You can't contain it anyway. You might as well use it for an offering tonight. And as all of that oozes out of your spirit, to replace all that stuff that has literally been poisoning your spirit. God's tried to tap on your heart so many times, but you've felt obligated to remind God of how much this one's done to you and what this one said about you. God said, that's the very barrier I'm trying to remove out of your life right now. That's why we're singing about fill this place with joy overflowing and peace overflowing and love overflowing. Church, one of the fruits of the Spirit is not bitterness. Allow the Spirit to bear fruit inside of you. Now God needs to send a tidal wave. He needs to turn the fire hose of the glory of the Lord on you to where the pressure of it is so immense that it washes away all the crud that's been building up in your heart and your spirit. God, do it. Do it, Lord. You need to tell Him that. Do it, Lord. I don't want any more crud. I don't want any more debris in my life. I don't want any more trash piling up in my spirit. God, blow it all away with your glory. Fill this place with joy overflowing. That's it. And peace overflowing. love that casts out fear in all of your glory fill this place with joy overflowing and peace overflowing and love
says he wants this stuff back. He said some of you entrusted him with the mess of your past and with mistakes and hurt and offenses and you gave them to him and they, they were not yours anymore. But he says that you've tried to take that stuff back and it doesn't belong to you anymore. The Holy Spirit wants his stuff back. It's not yours anymore. When you released it, you lost possession of it. You can't repossess it from God. He wants his stuff back. he uses to build with. <laughs> Glory to God. to lift me up. I long to manifest my presence in your midst. I long to do great things in your midst. Only give me glory. Only give me praise and I will do those things that you have desired. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory of God's in this place. He's here tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whew. I don't know what y'all are feeling by Facebook, but there's just a weightiness, a kabod, weightiness of his presence. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Spratt, would you come up and just kind of do a closing with those that are tuned in by Facebook? Just say a closing prayer with them or whatever the Lord gives you us before they sign off. And the rest of us, we're just going to continue to linger in here. Amen. So we sign off tonight and say goodbye for another time. We're not really saying goodbye. We're all part of the same family. For some of you who are not in that family yet, now's the time to open your heart. Allow the joy of the Lord to penetrate your soul to its very depths. Open your heart to him. Accept him. He will make you glad. He will give you joy. There will be peace in your heart that you have never experienced before. I'm going to pray. You open your heart. God in heaven. We witness together with your Holy Spirit tonight that you are doing and have done a great work in many lives and many souls right now. But some who are watching now have yet to open their hearts. May they do so right now and accept you into their lives. May they give you control and stop trying to run things themselves. May they realize, Lord, that you're the one who has the answers. You're the one who will give them hope and a future. You're the one who will bring them peace and joy. 
in the name of Jesus, crown each life with your Holy Spirit's blessing. Fill each soul with your Holy Spirit's presence. And may there come an anointing upon them to go forth and do the work that you have called them to do. We call these favors down, Father, by the name of Jesus, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Bless each one who has tuned in tonight. May their lives never be the same again. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost be in them, upon them, and may it flow through them like it never has before. May they realize tonight something has changed. Something has moved in spiritual realms. Something is different on the inside of them because of what the Holy Ghost has done in their lives. We give ourselves to you, Father, in the name of your precious Son. And we give you thanks and praise and all the glory goes to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.